couple uh, applications of uh, degree measurement and using some of the formulas that we've been addressing in the last two or three classes. I'm going to talk to you about linear speed and angular speed. And both of these folks are different types of velocities. They're both a type of velocity. How fast is something going per some unit of time? And the two types of velocities that you and I are going to address uh, in terms of looking at a circle is can you imagine now point P traveling at some constant rate counterclockwise? So we're about to figure out, you know, the, what, what's the, how fast is this point P traveling per minute or per second? How many centimeters is this point covering per minute or per second as I rotate point P uh, counterclockwise? Uh, around the circle. So we have up here, we all know that from algebra classes, remember distance equals rate times time. That's nothing more than anything different that you've learned in algebra. We just solved the equation for s. So speed is distance divided by time. Now the variable that we use for linear speed in this class is v for velocity. So speed is v. And now we're going to take distance, the point travels. Now remember, arc length we call s. That's the distance that that point's going to travel. So that's my numerator, and we're going to divide that by some unit of time. So uh, linear speed is found by simply taking um, distance s divided by time t. That's one type of velocity that we're going to look at, linear speed. The second type of velocity that we're going to look at is called angular speed. And back to the same picture of my circle, can you guys imagine that as I, as I rotate point P counterclockwise, this angle measurement is going to start changing. It's going to start changing, right? And we want to know how many radians is it changing per minute or per second? What's that rate of change with your angle measure? Now there are three formulas that you can use for angular speed. Now we just saw a second ago, right? Right here is linear speed. Linear speed V equals S over T. And from our last class period, how did we define uh, an angle measured in radians? It was arc length S divided by uh, radius R. So if you cross multiply that proportion, you get S is equal to R times theta. So we took out the S, in goes R times theta. We now can factor out the r, and this theta over t, folks, is what we call angular speed. So what I'm slowly building here, folks, is three different formulas that you can use for angular speed. For um, linear speed, there are no choices. For linear speed, folks, anytime a problem is dealing with linear speed, that's the one that you have to use somehow. When you have a problem dealing with angular speed, you have options. And the one that you use is dependent upon what information is given to you in the problem. Here is one that we could use for uh, angular speed. It's uh, omega equals theta times t. Uh, another one that we could use Oh, I had it backwards, I'm sorry. Um, there's only one that we can use for angular speed three that we can use for uh, linear speed because of those substitutions that we have down here at the, at the bottom. I had it backwards, I apologize. One formula for angular speed, and, and this is the uh, Greek letter omega. You simply take, and this makes sense, if you're going to spin this ray uh, counterclockwise, you have some angle measurement that was covered, theta. Well, let's say that that, got, that angle went so many radians per so many seconds, so many minutes, so that overall fraction ends up being your, your angular speed. And usually it's gonna, it, your, your units for that would be radians per some unit of time, radians per minute or radians per second. So this you want to tuck away somewhere. This you want to have some access to uh, possibly on your next exam where I'll say it's okay to to have these handy. I think they're also in the cover of your textbook too, if I do remember correctly. Because given a problem, you're going to have options for um, which one of these you decide to use. Okay?
Let's take a look at a couple problems. So suppose that point P is on a circle with radius 10 and ray OP is rotating with angular speed pi over 18 radians per second. Find the following. So we have this circle and we have this uh, ray OP and this ray is traveling like this. So point P is the point where uh, the ray and the circle are intersecting one another. We know that the radius of the circle is 10 and we also know, we're told up front that angular speed, which the variable for that is omega, we're told right up front that omega is pi over 18 radians per second. So as that point P is rotating counterclockwise, the angle measurement is changing at a rate of uh, pi over 18 radians per second. Letter A. Find the angle generated by P in six seconds. Well, I'm told up front that this angle is changing at a rate of pi over 18 radians per second. And we want to know how big is this angle after six seconds. So we're going to simply take pi over 18 times 6. So the angle formed, 6 over 18, we can reduce that to uh, 1 third. So the angle formed after 6 seconds is a pi over 3 radian angle. Questions there? Again, if we're told right here how fast the angle is changing per 1 second, all I did was multiply that by 6 to get how big this angle is after 6 seconds. B. Find the distance traveled by point P in those 6 seconds. Now the two velocities right that we just got done talking about, if they want to know, find the distance that point P travels on the circle, that's arc length. So from this point to some other point, determined by that angle that, that we were addressing in, in part A, we want to try to come up with how much distance was covered. Now this is a formula that we used last time. We know that arc length, arc length is equal to radius of the circle times the angle that was covered. This wasn't a, a formula from today. This was, a, what, last week, I think. So S equals R times theta. Arc length is equal to the radius of the circle we're given. That's 10. And we just found out in part A how big was the angle covered. Well, the angle in radians is pi over 3. So final answer would be 10 pi over 3. And in this case, uh, I, I see that the radius was given in uh, centimeters. And the answer to B, also being a distance, uh, units would be the same thing, centimeters. So part A, pi over 3. Part B, 10 pi over 3 centimeters. Anybody, any questions so far? I just, I don't see how those formulas are helpful. Uh, part last, C. Find the linear speed of, of P. Now, here's where you have three choices for your line, linear speed. Which one of those do I use for linear speed? Well, wh out of those three, which one do I know all the variables? R, R omega. R and omega. R and omega. So for part C, find linear speed. V equals R times omega. Radius of the circle is 10. Omega is given to you within the problem. Omega was uh, pi over 18 radians per second. So 10 times pi over 18 and you simplify that fraction we get 5 pi over 9. And that would be centimeters per, what's the unit of time? Seconds. Centimeters per second. 
Now, in the real world, when you're uh, coming up with your answers for linear speed and angular speed, um, it makes more sense to talk about it in terms of, you know, get rid of the pi. So 5 pi over 9, just in case you check your answer and things aren't looking quite the same as what you have, um, 5 pi over 9 ends up being 1.7. So now you know, it makes more sense when you say, hey, this point is traveling at a speed of 1.75 centimeters per second. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. And then I'll have you guys try one on your own. This problem says that we have a belt running a pulley, and the pulley has a radius of six centimeters, and it's running at a rate of 80 revolutions per minute. Find the following. Now, in some cases, you don't even need formulas to come up with angular speed and linear speed. Think to yourself, what does angular speed mean? All right, so many radians per some unit of time. That's what I gotta come up with. This pulley is operating at so many radians per some unit of time. By the way, I think you can all see the situation, right? You have some pulley, and then off of that pulley, um, we have a belt running that pulley. It's kind of like coming off here, coming off there. So it's this thing's spinning at a rate of uh, 80 revolutions per minute. Well, how many radians is one revolution? 2 pi. So if we're going to do uh, one revolution is equivalent to 2 pi, then that must mean that 80 revolutions is equal to 160 pi. And how long does it take for this belt or this pulley to spin 80 revolutions? One minute. So we can say now that 160 pi over one minute, or 160 pi radians per minute, right there is your angular speed. Really no formula involved with that part of it. Now, I've got to read carefully my directions because what's A want? Oh per second. What do I have it in right now? I have it in terms of per minute. So we have to multiply this by 60 yet. Or I'm sorry, divide by 60. Uh, it's 160 pi radians in one minute, which means 160 pi radians in or per 60 seconds. And then this reduces to what? 16 over 6 becomes 8 thirds. So answer there would be 8 pi over 3 radians per second. Questions with part A? Part B, find the linear speed again. Again, you have three choices. Which one am I going to use? Same one we used last time. Part B will say that linear speed V is R times omega, because I just found omega in part A. So we're going to simply take radius, which was 6 centimeters, multiply that by omega, which is in the same units in terms of being centimeters, or uh, in terms of seconds. Our answer will be in, in the terms of centimeters per second. So when we multiply these two together, we get 48 pi, I actually do it a little bit quicker, 3 goes into 6 2 times, 2 times 8, 16 pi. So we get a final answer of 16 pi centimeters per second. And if you wanted to try to get an idea of well, how, fast, how fast are you talking there, um, 16 pi is the same thing as roughly 50.2 say 50.3 centimeters per second. Okay. Kind of have an idea of angular and linear speed so far? 
Okay, I want you guys to try this one on your own and then we'll go over this one yet. All right, we're told in the problem it takes two hours for this satellite to make an orbit, so we would have to think, assuming that an orbit is a perfect circle, which we know that it isn't, but we look beyond that. Um, one orbit would be considered two pi radians. So it takes, um, takes this satellite two hours to go uh, two pi, therefore divide both sides by two, uh, the angular speed, omega, is it's traveling uh, pi radians per one hour. Pi radians per hour. And the distance from center of the Earth to this actual orbit or path that the satellite is taking, we have to add these two values together to get 8,000. So that's the actual radius of the big circle. So part A find linear speed. Linear speed is r times omega. We'll simply take 8,000, multiply that by pi, and the units would be, in this case, uh, 8,000 pi uh, how far, kilometers per hour. And if you were to convert that to, a, to an actual number that you and I could talk about, 8,000 pi is equivalent to, or very close to, 25,132 kilometers per hour, which is pretty fast. Can't feel it. So that's how fast the satellite is traveling clockwise or counterclockwise. B, now that we know that it's traveling roughly 25,132 kilometers per hour, part B simply wants to know how far does the satellite go then in 4.5 hours. So we'll take 25,132, multiply that by 4.5. So after 4.5 hours, roughly 113,000 uh, kilometers. Directions will, will specifically say round to the nearest whole number, round to the nearest kilometer, round to the nearest tenth of a kilometer, um, etc. So those are the two solutions we're looking for there. Okay? Have a better understanding of uh, angular speed and linear speed?